Well, I think things are not turning the way we thought they would. Uh, remember the wonderful party we had at the beginning of the year. It's over in February. We have data really showing uh, a collapse of inflows into Asia, uh, mainly because the Fed now is much more hawkish than we thought it would be uh, back at the beginning of the year. And I think that's the direction, of course. Unfortunately, it is clear that inflation is going to be much more resilient. Unfortunately, that's not the resilience we would like for the economy, but that's what it is. Inflation is resilient, is very, very sticky. And this is because for the US now, it's no longer about energy, it's about uh, service inflation. And that's wages and that second round effects, they're already there, they're stuck. Um, and that means that the Fed will sound, power will sound very hawkish again. That's where we are and we need to deal with it here in Asia. Yeah, hawkish. Okay, so we've heard, and it was, I, I think it was just earlier this morning, right? Somebody was referring to a piece in a financial news outlet in the U.S., which talked about uh, terminal rate for the Fed being up at seven and three quarters. I, I mean, that, that's uh, that's the highest I've uh, I've heard uh, so far. But you know, wherever it ends up, it's going to be significantly higher and probably higher than markets are pricing right now. It would be fair to say. So, connecting it to uh, your space, which is uh, uh, Asia and economics out here. Who is in the best position? Which economies or rather central banks are in the best position to withstand this onslaught of uh, higher rates? Well, first of all, obviously, whoever needs to follow the Fed, i.e. Hong Kong, they need to bear with the consequences of, of that uh, monetary regime at this juncture. So basically, no hope. But the good thing is Hong Kong, no matter the currency board, is growing finally from a recession last year. And that will help a little bit, a tiny bit, to withstand these high rates. But still, we, we would need to watch the housing market in Hong Kong, commercial real estate, etc., because this is going to affect uh, that specific market, which is important for the Hong Kong economy. I think the other concern here is those central banks that somehow escaped the Fed. I would say escaped the Fed last year. I mean, if, if you think about how rather uh, moderate uh, uh, hikes were compared to the Fed. In the whole of Asia, we have RBA today, I mean, maybe 25 basis points, but frankly speaking, uh, nothing compared to the Fed. If you think about the terminal rate we're expecting for RBA. So, our, and by the way, inflation, even there, we've seen that it is not fully, fully under control. So I think those central banks that, that seem to be, quote unquote, Forgetting about the Fed last year, might have to remember the Fed this year because the pressure is still there. That's the difference. We thought it was over. It is not over.